Good morning and welcome to Almus Market Mornings, your daily dose of global financial updates. We live in a time where weekends for market participants are spent on tracking possible escalations in war. Oil trades at a precarious level, possibly due to uncertainties, while gold saw a solid move of almost 3.5% on Friday. Indian trade data came in better than expected as well. This week, focus will shift to the ongoing US earnings season, a lot of speeches from Fed members, as well as US retail sales and housing related data. Good morning, JK. Interesting times in the market. Take us through your expectations for this week. Good morning. Uh, yes, uh, I, I think uh, let's recap what's been uh, uh, happening. Uh, last week, uh, we had authorities trying to keep the markets calm uh, in the face of the sudden outbreak of war in the Middle East. Uh, but on Friday, we did see the markets taking over and uh, look to be hedging a potential escalation of geopolitical tensions. And uh, that was clearly evident in safe haven buying of treasuries, dollar and gold. And the stocks were getting uh, sold out. Uh, oil buying has been persistent and uh, hitting a weekly high also. Uh, that's also an indication of concerns about uh, supply chains getting affected. But uh, I mean, looking at the war situation itself, it, you know, it continues to pose a lot of uncertainties. After the unexpected brutal attack on uh, 7th October on Israeli uh, population, we have seen Israel counterattack also in the last few days, which was quite on a large scale. Uh, but what we are looking closely observing is, one, whether Israel will go ahead with a ground attack that can be devastating, and whether B, whether uh, influential Western powers will restrain them considering the wider implications on global peace and the global economy. Uh, See, Israel retaliatory, retaliatory attack on Syria, who has been getting involved, and finally, the implications of unnerving statements from Iran, who said that no one can guarantee control of the situation and non-expansion of the conflict, conflict if Israel invades uh, Gaza ahead of an, of, an, of an expected ground offensive. So these are things that we are still trying to find an answer, and until the markets Settle with uh, you know one way or the other, uh, you you will have uncertainty, and I think safe and buying will continue. Gold, of course, was an outperformer. Uh, it has risen 5.5 percent in the last week from 1832 to 1932, getting a big lift from the risk of sentiment. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, you can also put it down to the severe sell-off that we had seen in the gold in the last uh, one month or so, uh, due to long liquidation from short-term players and speculators. And now we are hearing about central bank buying resuming ahead of 1800 levels in the you know, names of China, Poland, and India being mentioned. And the World Gold Council survey also shows that 24% of the central banks intend to increase their holding of reserves of gold in the next 12 months. And that supports the precious metals. So all, all factors uh, and the level supporting gold, uh, it has seen a massive rise. Treasury yields uh, have been consumed. Uh, consolidating uh, with uh, contrasting influence from war situation and uh, U.S. economy strength. If the war situation does uh, to ease off about which there are mixed views, we feel the yields uh, should resume their uptrend once again. During the past week, 10-year uh, yields were down by 17 basis points, while 30-year were down by 29 basis points. It uh, smacks more of uh, short covering by players. Stocks were mis mixed in the U.S. as a uh, much better than expected quarterly earnings report from major banks, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, and Citi beat market expectations by a big margin, and they were largely helped by a high, higher interest rates. But uh, these gains were uh, offset by continued Middle East uh, tensions and uh, rising crude prices, and you know the consumer sentiment data coming much worse. In fact, the uh, consumer sentiment data as per Michigan survey smacked of stagflation take over the economy because India dropped heavily from 67.2 to 6 point, uh, 63 in October, while the one-year forward inflation expectations rose from 3.2 to 3.8 points. So the consumer sentiment dropping along with inflation expectations rising is not a good news. Uh, those stocks did gain on a weekly basis. Uh, I suspect a hand of official support uh, in, with an intention to keep uh, market steady in the face of uh, the Mideast tensions. On the currency, dollar have dollar has continued to outperform the peers and DMs with a combination of relative higher yields, better economy, higher for longer policy approach, as well as safe haven buying due to war factor. 
uh, during the past week, index has risen by 0.5% to 106.64, but we do have a strong resistance uh, going towards 107 and 10750. And I think these will hold and the equivalent levels at, uh, for Euro would be at 1.0450, GBP at 1.2050 and Japanese and at the psychological 150 levels. Uh, you know, on the rupee, uh, we had a trade data that sprang a positive surprise uh, with deficit coming down by 10.11 billion on an year on year basis and 6.71 billion on a month on month basis uh, when you consider both merchandise and the service sectors. Uh, the sizable moderation in monthly trade deficit was also due to big fall in the imports by about 4.8 billion. Uh, while merchandise exports remained almost identical to previous month, net services exports were higher. Now, despite the lower deficit on an overall basis, which can reduce the pressure on a foreign exchange, the fall in imports indicates a lower domestic demand and possible re-export as in the case of value-added goods. So exports falling on a year-on-year -year basis is a big worry as that affects uh, the GDP and the employment since the beginning of current financial year, exports have contracted by 8.77% to 211.4 billion. Uh, I'm sure that's something which will be engaging the attention of the policymakers and perhaps even the exchange rate at some point of time. Uh, the tricky situation for India is that oil prices are going up again, which ideally necessitates hiking the global pump prices, but uh, uh, domestic pump, pump prices but uh, that may again be offset by worries about inflation going up. And it's also an election time when the government may hold off an increase. So, uh, which is once again, uh, you know, a rise in the fiscal deficit indirectly. Now, notwithstanding quite an improvement in the def deficit, uh, rupee closed near its weakest levels on Friday, demand continuing to dominate with the latest implants coming from the Middle East war and the fresh rise in crude prices. Uh, flows have continued to be negative in October. Data showing 700 million outflow uh, after 1.8 billion outflow last month. So that is seeing RBS continued presence uh, influencing the rupee, uh, you know, breaking uh, further lower. I think this situation will continue until we see a change or a signal from the central bank. Uh, as I said, this week we'll turn our attention to the US retail sales data uh, and also comments from Powell uh, in one of the events that he will be attending on Thursday. Uh, and, of and of course, we will have some indications on the housing sector as well. <clears throat> Overall, uh, market will have its maximum attention on the uh, developments in the Middle East uh, and keep a very eye on how the treasuries and gold perform. Thank you. Thank you, JK. And uh, I think uh, for the listeners, if uh, if we could just summarize the word, it would be like uh, people who are tracking it uh, would be tracking a potential ground invasion of the Gaza Strip, which can lead to some more parties getting involved. So that's a that's an event which uh, participants will be tracking. Uh, last week, we had the consumer data from Michigan survey, uh, which was again on the weaker front, uh, along with rise in inflation expectations. So stagflationary fears are uh, creeping in the US economy. For rupee, uh, we had the trade deficit data coming in lower than expected uh, because there was a substantial fall in imports. Uh, and also uh, from the beginning of the financial year, as Jacob mentioned, we have seen exports for, uh, fall to close to fall, uh, fall close to 8%. So till the time there are further more triggers, it is expected that uh, rupee might remain in the range. That's it from us today. Thanks for listening. Uh, tune in tomorrow for the latest in the financial markets.